Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to our channel and today we are bringing up another news for you that of course recently ISTQV just revised another content of one of their certification that is test automation engineer and many of us were really looking forward to understand what's the change, what's the understanding of the examination and how far uh, we are looking forward to have some really, really realistic examinations happening in ISTQB. And all these changes are basically to meet the real time standards to make sure that the certifications do not sound theoretical, but add more value to anyone who's looking forward to get certified. And that's where these certifications have been looked after by all the people from the member of the board and trying to renovate it in such a way that not just the certification gives you theoretical understanding, but also connects the dot to the real world scenarios. So today we are talking about the test automation engineer and trying to understand what has changed in the new syllabus version 2.0. And for that, we will just go to the screen and quickly look into the same. get started of course uh, we got our official website of istqb which is istqb.org and uh, you generally find everything right here if you really want to get the right information because there are plenty of websites claiming a wrong information as well and sometimes they do try to uh, confuse you with respect to different other information so this is the only source where you, you can, where you can really find all the right information at any point of time and that's where we want to just take a moment to help you understand that how to grab that information so as you scroll through you will find that there's a syllabus or certification marked as test automation engineer and in order to take this ISTQB foundation level certification is a must so let's go and click on the test automation engineer and right here, you would find the latest and greatest on the top itself, that uh, CTAL, that is Advanced Level Certification Test Automation Engineer 2.0, is the latest released version of ISTQB Certified Tester Advanced Level Test Automation Engineer. And this should be again some setting by 12th of June. So last month, they released it, but up to 25, the boards and organization will have time to roll out the new examinations and certifications on the same. So quite often people do ask me that, hey, uh, can I go ahead and take up soon after the uh, announcement of the new syllabus? But the answer is no, you need some time to be given to the bodies to create the examinations as sample papers and then roll it out for public to start taking the examination. So it takes some time to set up everything, but it just doesn't happen as and when the announcements are made. So right here you can see that we are talking about 2.0 and if you just scroll down you would find as usual the examination details. The number of questions would be 40. Total points will be 66 because not all the questions will carry one mark. Rather there would be questions with uh, different scorings and you will have topics from K3 and K4. And passing criteria would be 43 and certainly the time provided to you to answer these 40 questions will be 90 minutes which is one and a half hours of time and uh, right here if you move on to the right side you can even find the outline right here that uh, what the chapters are what kind of content is getting covered so we'll just go and deep dive into the same right from the syllabus itself so this is version 2.0 and if you just click on that it opens a new tab with all the details and if you simply scroll through you will be able to list the topics out that what exactly is being covered and what we need to look into. So again, in a nutshell, the syllabus revision is all about improvising the content to that of the need of an automation test engineer as of today, rather than just talking about some of the uh, unnecessary theoretical concepts, which does not help. However, this does not include the uh, any kind of practicals and hands-on session, but uh, still going to have very much correlative understanding of what it takes to be called as automation engineer. So right here, the introduction will talk about the purpose of test automation. And at the same time, it will talk about the advantages and disadvantages of the test automation. Uh, test automation in the software development lifecycle, how do you organize it? How exactly do you manage them? And explain how the test automation is applied across different software development lifecycle models. So blending those with the traditional and the agile methodology and certainly talking about selecting suitable test automation tools for a given system under test. That means 
the technology, the platform, and many other such things would be very, very important for a test tool selection. Thus, there are certain considerations which we need to take into account in order to make the conclusion on the selection of the tool. But as the chapter two will help you understand how do we prepare for test automation, that what are those prerequisites and set up what you might need in order to start doing automation in your project. So understanding the configuration is the first topic of an infrastructure to enable test automation, which further includes like describing the configuration needs for an infrastructure, then explaining how the test automation is leveraged within different environments, uh, which would even blend some of the topics from the DevOps part. Then evaluation process for selecting the right test tool and strategy. Then here we will be analyzing, first of all, the system under test to determine the appropriate test automation solution, and then illustrate the technical findings of a tool evaluation, which is the first and foremost activity in terms of selecting a tool anytime. That is, you need to go through an evaluation phase, conduct a POC to make sure that the tool fits the purpose or not, and then make the final decision. Whereas chapter three will help you understand on the test automation architecture, which will generally talk about what makes and builds an automation solution altogether. So here we'll be talking about the design concepts, which can be leveraged in the test automation. And we do take uh, things like major capabilities in the test automation architecture, how to design a test automation solution, how to apply layering of test automation frameworks, applying different approaches for test automation automating the test cases and applying the design principles and design patterns in the test automation. If you look at all these topics, all you're talking about, how to define the steps, layers of data gathering, uh, connecting the data to the automation script, preparing the base script, to driver script, control flow, etc., in a very simple manner. So you will have a workflow to understand altogether that what it takes to make an automation framework work. Right, so this will talk about everything in that context, and this chapter is uh, certainly K3. So, uh, moving on to the next one, chapter four, which is going to talk about implementing the test automation. So, given that you have designed the framework, you can now go ahead and start implementing and setting it up. And this would be on K4, that means you will be asked to analyze the scenario and then make a right decision. So, you need to be extra cautious in this chapter. Uh, here, we'll be talking about the test automation development which will certainly apply guidelines that support effective test automation pilot and development activities, risk associated with test automation development, because uh, certainly a tool is not just seen with benefits. We need to also consider all the factors which can uh, bring any kind of situation which could turn into a disastrous experience. So risk should be taken into account to understand what it can be and then look forward to have a mitigation plan for it before rolling it out. Talking about test automation solution maintainability, which is another important thing. Maintainability, uh, just the moment you start preparing your very first script, right from the day one, the maintenance becomes a crucial part of it, right? So we need to spend a little time. So allocating the cost, time, and effort for the maintainability should also be understood at this point of time. So one way is just trying to take everything into account while teaching you that what it takes to implement the test automation development. Further to add, of course, implementing implementation and develop deployment strategies for the test automation. Here we will be blending it with the CI CD pipelines. How can you integrate uh, the automation scripts into a CI CD pipeline altogether? So apply test automation at different test levels uh, within pipelines. Uh, explain configuration management for the testware and then talk about the test automation dependencies for an API infrastructure. So as you can see, uh, the previous, maybe you're not sure about that, but the previous levels did not talk about CICD at all. But at this point of time, we are talking about it. So that means we are trying to meet the current trends of industries through these certifications. Also, uh, the next chapter is to talk about the test automation reporting and matrices, which equally plays a vital role. Uh, you certainly need to understand what kind of tools comes with what kind of reporting options, and sometimes a tool doesn't have a reporting option at all. So you might need an additional softwares or add-ons to include into the automation tools in order to capture the required matrices and populate the 
respective results. So here you will be understanding the collection, analysis, and reporting of the test automation data, where we'll talk about data collection methods from the test automation solution and the system under test, also data from the test automation solution and system under test to better understand the test results because not just selecting certain matrices are enough, but uh, having right set of matrices really plays a vital role. Uh, explain how a test progress report is constructed and published. So that's the display part, like publishing into a dashboard, reporting methods, etc. would be a part of this section to be discussed. And uh, the next chapter, we'll talk about verifying the test automation solution, which includes certainly uh, options like uh, plan to verify the test automation environment, including the test tool setup, talking about the correct behavior of given automated test script and the test suite, identify where the test automation produces an unexpected result, and explain how the static analysis can aid the test automation code quality. So we do know static analysis from the foundation part that it helps you to analyze the written code and find anomalies in that. So same way when it comes to automation testing, it would pretty much be helpful and how exactly that could be applicable up to what extent and how we can make most out of this benefit. Finally, the chapter eight will talk about uh, the continuous improvement of the existing automation test suites. So here we'll talk about continuous improvement opportunities and we'll talk about discovering opportunities for improving test case through data collection and analysis, analyze the technical aspects of a deployed test automation solution and provide recommendations for improvement because everything once deployed has something to talk about in terms of improvement because initially you might have done something which might be sufficient for you but over a period of time you do see provisions to make it better and improvement is certainly an important part to be applied in your day-to-day -day activities so Im improvement will also be a topic to talk about and then restructure the automated testware to align with the system under test updates we know that uh, frequent updates will be taking place as and when the product evolves during the product life cycle and uh, the updates should be reflected in the automation test script so how does it really you know go in line with those of these changes to that of also summarize opportunities of uh, for use of the test automation tools which <clears throat> pretty much talks about how exactly uh, Act and at any point of time would be helpful for someone to make a decision about uh, further making use of it in other tools or other projects coming up next. So I hope you got a complete understanding of what is new in our test automation engineer certification and we will be looking forward to bring these tutorials pretty much soon as mentioned earlier we have this particular playlist on our channel already but for the previous version that is version 1.0 2.0 has been recently announced so i would take some time to start creating a playlist for that but just the reason i don't create it upfront is only because the examinations are not available the moment I start creating the new playlist, everyone will start following the new playlist, but the examination will happen on the old version. So I don't want you to get confused. And that's the reason I hold myself a little back when I wait for creating the new playlist. So please expect this playlist to come up on the screen on my channel by October mid, so that by the time the other bodies have some examinations ready, you will also have playlists by the end of this year ready with you so that you can prepare and go ahead and complete the certifications but right now most of the bodies i think many of the bodies across the world do not have an examination on v2.0 so just stand hold and uh, in case you are planning to write there's nothing wrong in writing version 1.0 because your credibilities remain valid forever so even if you're writing on 1.0 meanwhile you can go ahead and do that but as and when you prepare, uh, you may have to keep a track of it. Uh, do we have version 2.0 available? But at the end of uh, June, you will never have version 1.0 to write thereafter. So maybe by the end of December, most of the bodies, most of the countries will start rolling out the examinations for 2.0. So that's where you can only write it, not before that. So stick to 1.0 if you're writing now or for the next six months. 
If in case not, then plan your certifications after December and that would be the right time to take up these examinations. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.